G'day legends, TJC Sports here. Welcome back to another Rugby League video as always. To be more specific, uh, welcome back to another Pacific Championships predictions video. Today, we're going to be doing week two. Last week, I got two out of two, the perfect week. Uh, oh my goodness, does it feel good to be a genius. Be sure to like and subscribe as always. If you enjoy, hit that bell to be notified of when we upload. And also keep in mind that at the end of the day, these are just my predictions. So feel free to let me know in the comments down below whether you agree or disagree with anything I say here. With all of that out of the way, let's get on with it. To kick things off, we will have New Zealand versus Samoa. This will be the New Zealand Kiwis first ever game in the Pacific Championships and it will be Samoa's second after obviously having already played last week where they got smashed 38 to 12 against the mighty Australian Kangaroos. You can't blame them too much though. Samoa clearly showed a lot of heart there and I think we're going to see just that a lot of heart in this game. These are two teams with a ton of support behind them and I'm sure we're going to be in for a cracker of a game. So much talent here in the squads. There is a number of players from both these teams that you could highlight to potentially have great games. For New Zealand, of course, there's players such as Jermaine Asaku who had an actually incredible first season for the Dolphins. He also played for Samoa, who they are playing. So, of course, he's got that experience with both these sides. Will be exciting to see how he does. Or even like a Charles Nickel Klukstad, who's lining up at fullback for them after an incredible season for the Waz. And don't think that the Kiwis are the only ones with good players. Samoa have some too. Mate, that fullback, Sua for logo for them, he's got such a bright future. Unlucky not to have a try versus Australia. Also, Brian Toto, who just won a three-peat with the Penrith Panthers. A great forward as captain in Junior Paolo. Or even just young players like Gordon Chan come Tong coming in as number nine for them. So there's no doubt of the talent that both these squads have. Also, in terms of changes for both teams, nothing really for New Zealand as they are yet to play in the Pacific Championships. But for Samoa, since their game versus Australia, they do have one change. And that is Mr. Young Tunamapia is out. And his NRL teammate Marion Seve, who also plays for the Storm in the centres, is in. While not a game changer for me, I'm keen to see how he does. As for my prediction, I want this game to be closer than I'm predicting, but looking at both lineups, there's only one answer for me, and unfortunately, I'm predicting Samoa to lose two weeks in a row. I'm going for the New Zealand Kiwis to win, and I'm going to say they're going to win well with a 13-plus victory over Samoa. Best of luck, though. I want a closer game, and I hope, I absolutely just hope, that I am wrong and it is a, is a closer game. Stephen Crichton, he didn't have a great first game at 5'8 um, with his partnership with Dejan Arcee, but that can change. Maybe he will do better in this one. Australia is a great team that can make some brilliant players look average. We'll have to wait and see, though. It all kicks off at 4 o'clock on Saturday. Next up is our second and final game. It is Fiji versus Cook Islands. Fiji are playing their first Pacific Championship game in this one, just like New Zealand in the last one. And Cook Islands, guys, just like Samoa in the last one, have are coming off a big loss to Papua New Guinea, who just absolutely controlled that game so well. I think Cook Islands towards the end looked better, but they simply did not make the cut versus Papua New Guinea. Both these teams have some pretty decent players in their squad to help them out in this one. I think that both teams have a shot. Whether it's young players and experienced players such as Sunya Taruva, Doreen Bula, um, Micah Sivo, Michaeli Ravalawa and more. Or for Cook Islands, you have players such as Stephen Masters, Brad Takarangi, Davy Moali, Zane Tavano. And those are just some of the players lining up in this game. And for the likes of Jareem and Kurt Doniger, who's playing at 5'8 for Fiji, they are actually playing their first ever games for them. So that's quite exciting. And I'll be keen to see how they do when we react to this game. 
In terms of changes, just like with New Zealand, I don't have too much to say for Fiji, but for Cook Islands, they have a couple changes. Firstly, due to their halfback being injured, Ejan Masters shifts to halfback, and in the centres, we have a new player coming in, Alvin Mongati. Apologies if I have mispronounced that. I have never really watched this guy before, but... Of course, something needed to change with their halfback being out, and I wish him luck in this game. Another change is Makahesi Makatoa has dropped out of the team. They've moved him out, which I honestly think are some pretty interesting changes. Keeping everything I've said in mind, looking at the lineups next to each other, the changes, the, the players that haven't changed, how Cook Islands performed last week, You've all been waiting for my prediction, and I'm going to give it to you. I'm going with Fiji to win this 13+. plus. I think Fiji will have a pretty comfortable win here. I think they could go pretty high. Maybe Cook Islands will surprise us. I mean, they did a lot better towards the end of the Papua New Guinea game. But I think that the 13+, plus domination that the Pacific Championships has been so far in its games, will continue this week with two 13-plus wins. Anyways, Legends, those were my predictions for the upcoming week two of the Pacific Championships. If you enjoyed, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Sorry for uploading this late. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time. Consider clicking one of the other videos on screen if you enjoyed.